welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your entrepreneurship tutor, Professor Henry Buisa of Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. This is translated book of sayings that every business person must know, and that this is part two. It's a continuing series. Today we'll talk about I'll talk about Enula Yamangana. That's a book of saying. Enula Yamangana. Translated may mean character forms are in life or in childhood. Or a tree is straightened while it is still young. So don't wait until it's too late. Yes, a number of business situations can be related with this saying. I hear elect to relate it to family business succession planning. Yes, look at that pie chart. In matters, family business going into the second generation, only 30% proceed, 70% fail. In other words, succession management in family businesses is very poor. And indeed, the world is not short of poor succession management cases. For example, in Kenya, you will read, once giant retailer tasks lost its tasks two decades after the death of the founder Joram Kamau, journalistic language. But this, let's listen to this. There's also the Njenga Karume case in Kenya. The estate of the late former cabinet minister Njenga Karume and his children have agreed to negotiate for an amicable solution to a raging dispute over the management of the property he left behind. Speaking at a joint press conference in Nairobi, the estate and the children's representatives said that they had agreed on nearly half of the contentious issues that saw the matter move to court last year. Karume, who died in 2012, left behind property worth about 17 billion shillings. Yes, and then came the Kerishon Kirima case. Those two documents did not really portray uh, what they really wanted, but they portrayed what his handlers wanted. So I am happy and I think it's the best way for the family. I just pray to God that uh, we can all sit down as a family and be able to listen together and then move forward. I am thrilled that my father's wishes have been upheld. My father set up his trust in 1996, amended it in 2003 as the amended uh, tr uh, registered trust of the Kirima Trust, and he put most of his properties in it already long before the, the current events. So as a family and as his children, we are, we are relieved to know that his wishes actually have been upheld and that they will, this, the monies from his estate will look after his grandchildren, educate them, which was really one of his main wishes. We hope as a family we can now come together and just bring this matter to an end as soon as possible, sit around the table as the children of one father and really just try and bring this matter to an end. Yes, and it's just not in Kenya alone. Look, abroad, another f succession management failed. Back to Kenya, tasks that we have already mentioned here. So, succession management is a global issue. Now, many business owners, and especially in Africa, do not introduce their children to their businesses, arguing that getting used to money will spoil them. That kills youth entrepreneurship and, by extension, poor family business succession. Let's listen to some report here. Money. How we relate to money largely depends on how we have seen our parents, how we have seen those ahead of us relate to money. So does that paradigm need to change? Perhaps it does. Yes, parenting. How we look at our parents and how they bring us up. Uh, us up. Enula Yamangana, family businesses should instill the business culture in their children early enough to save later school polls. Let's go on and listen to this report. Majority of us do not have an opportunity to learn how to interact or relate to money. And as a result, we end up doing that in the wrong way, depending on how we grew up, depending on how we saw our parents and those ahead of us uh, do that. So I'll start with you. 
Mr. I think it's true, um, especially for us Africans, we, our parents don't tell us what they do with their money. So if we grow up not see, not understanding these things from uh, at home, mm. then it becomes very difficult to do things, these things even so much later. So that's when now people start getting into doing uh, different courses or reading different books. Okay, and, and I mean, when you talk about our parents not even sharing, I remember the only thing I remember my parents talking about money mm -hmm. is that money doesn't grow on trees. And that didn't, yeah. <laughs> that didn't do much in terms of explaining, okay, it doesn't grow on trees, but where does it come from? All I saw is that they went to work and came back home. Uh, but Mike, do you agree that uh, there needs to be more interaction, uh, especially with the younger generation, on how to uh, get more financially intelligent? Of course, Mike, I 100% agree that. Because the sooner you start interacting with money, the sooner you start uh, knowing how to manage your finances, mm -hmm. the better you will, have, you will be in the future. Yeah? And we say this at Centonomy, there is no right time or wrong time to start uh, learning about money. Right. The perfect time is now. So you're never too late, you're never too early. The perfect time is now. Is now. Yes. And, and is that age restricted? Because I've seen, again, other uh, areas where they talk about uh, teaching your children or the younger ones by how maybe, for instance, when you go to the supermarket, mm. things must be on a list. If yes. they're not on the shopping list, then they do not get into the trolley. Is that, mm. do you think that's part of financial discipline and teaching? Uh, I think so. I think it's, there's more lessons when you're young that matter. Mm. Um, I normally say, uh, as a parent, you should start, uh, as long as uh, the kid can understand or comprehend what money is or that it's a form of exchange and value and all that because um, even when they get to around 9, 10, some of them, depending on how they are raised by their parents, depending on those very small lessons, they become very sharp and they are the people who even start succeeding very early in life. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Parents will need to instill that business culture. But Again, a book is saying, Ovia Enjusi Wabi Yanengoho. Meaning, yes, blame that fox that came and ran away with your hen. But also turn around and blame the hen for straying away from the compound to be caught. So, even the youth themselves can also learn to plan their money matters. Let's listen to this. Now, for the youth, we normally say, especially here in Kenya, we say we don't have money, oh, I can't manage my pocket money nicely. But the thing is, uh, this money that you say you don't have, it is because it is going to other places, yeah? Because you do not have a plan for your money. I normally say, if you do not have a plan for your money, someone else will have a plan for your money. So we advise people to have, start having a plan for your money. Even before you receive some money, what 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 do you intend to do with it? And this thing that you intend to do with it, how will it be of benefit to you? Okay, and now when you talk about a plan, um, I'm sure most of them have a plan. It's only that maybe the plan is not the right plan. Because uh, mm -hmm. the minute the money comes, hey, there's a club, there's a rave here, <laughs> yeah. there's uh, this thing I've been wanting to get, whatever. So the plan is there. It, it, and, that's it... why, and that's why I said, Mike, eh? you have to have a plan for your money. Because if you do not have someone else will have a plan for you. Ah, okay. And then again, this plan should be of beneficial to you. Right? It should be of benefit to you personally. Mm -hmm. Think about it, yeah? If you don't have a plan for your money, I will come and tell you, hey, Mike, let's go for coffee, let's go for lunch. And but, I'll be like, yeah, I have yeah, some extra dollars yeah, in but my because pocket. Because hey. those extra dollars, you don't have a plan for them, I am now coming with a plan for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, so the youth don't just look up to the parents. It is never too late to start. But back to the parents. Parents, the children never begged you or asked you to come into this world. You brought them into this world. You responsibility to take care of them at least at those tender ages. So I'm saying, how can we therefore bring up entrepreneurial kids you can see I have written the word entrepreneurs here. There is no universally accepted characteristics or qualities of an entrepreneur. And that it motivates me to generate my own. You can call them Buisa's specs, Buisa's personal entrepreneurial characteristics. And I have crafted them from the word 
entrepreneurs. Let's go. Let's look at it. E, envision, set goals. Let your kids list their dreams and then guide them to achieve these dreams. That is set, setting goals. Novelty minded, the end. Creativity, be creative. Help your kids to be creative with the things and the words. Whatever they get a word, let them be creative with it. We shall come back to it. I'll refer to it again. Tolerance, perseverance. First of all, tolerate the ways of your children and tell them to tolerate yours also. And then keep telling them tolerant quotes, stories. Like Ebukus will say, Mukenda Mbola Kole Bunyolo. Tolerate the long journey, the hard journey, and you'll finally arrive. R, risk loving. Tell them what risk is and let them play risk games. And as they play the risk games, reward them for winning and even losing only differentiate the quality of rewards. For example, let your kids play what you call ring toss game. Google and you'll know about it. Ask me later and I'll tell you. E, energetic. Of course, to be an entrepreneur, you have to be energetic. Let your kids exercise regularly to keep fit. Just keeping indoors may not help. Passionate. P. Find out what your kids love, what they are passionate about, and help them enjoy that passion. If it's music, allow them to enjoy it. Help them to enjoy it. If it's whatever, football, soccer, please do so. Responsibility. Yes. Give your children responsibility so that they feel they are responsible. For example, make your child in charge of kitchen shopping list. Wherever you exhaust the kitchen resources, let them make the list. Go to buy or you go with them to buy. Let them feel responsible. E enterprising. Encourage your children to generate answers to all wrongs in the house or farm. Anything that you see wrong, encourage them. What can be the solution? Let them be enterprising in their thinking. Networking. Encourage your children to make and keep friends. Let them love introducing themselves to others and asking others what they are and what they do and keep those contacts. E. Efficiency. Teach them economy. For example, let them use as little water as possible to wash as many dishes as possible and wash them clean. Let them not be extravagant. You, unstoppable, resilience. Back to uh, what we are talking about, teaching them uh, creativity. Tell them, for example, no does not mean no, the negative no. No means next opportunity. And fail does not again need, mean that failure negative. Fail means first attempt in learning. So let them be creative. Convert every negative situation to a possible positive situation. Re realistic are teach them to be themselves and not to just go with the crowd. Let them just follow peer pressure. And finally, is self-confident. Yes, one way of making your children self-confident is to dress them well. Not necessarily expensively, but dress them well, smart, let them stand out. Yes, this is just a synopsis of what you can do to bring up entrepreneurial kids. They are, I'm coming up with a, an entire book on, the, on these characteristics. But there you are. So, please, if you enjoyed it, like it, share it, and subscribe to motivate us to bring you more. And do not forget to leave a comment. You could also request for a topic for us to cover. So, thank you for being our fan. Reach us at wehem at gmail.com. 
www.ntrepreneurial.com. Have an entrepreneurial day, won't you?